I am Eric Weitzel. I'm a grad student at the University of Nebraska, and I'm going to be talking about Bosco today. Um, I'm going to have a short presentation. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of big, long presentations. Uh, so mo I'm hoping most of this will be demoing um, Bosco actually working. Uh, it's a live demo, so fingers crossed. And then demoing uh, the early R integration work that we've been doing. Um, and so I want to quickly go through the goals of Bosco. Uh, we wanted to make uh, it easy for users to do computational research. And it should be easy to use, install, maintain, and most importantly, it should be simple for the user. And so we did this by using what's already at the clusters. Uh, we, already, we use their identity management, their access methods. Um, we present a consistent interface to the users. And if demand increases, if users learn that they like high throughput computing, uh, they can expand organically from cluster to cluster uh, without any changes. So I like to go through a user scenario of what a user actually, uh, what, what their mentality is. So they may have a computer access to one cluster, and then they have this processing for the research that they want to do. So they want to have simple job submission management, and they want their research to be done now so they can publish. And so what Bosco does is it submits uh, you have your Bosco submit host, which uh, in, in my case is my laptop always, uh, but it could be a desktop somewhere at work or wherever. Um, when you submit a job, it uses SSH into the login node, um, which almost all clusters have SSH as their access method. Uh, it starts up something called the blob, which in turn submits a job to the PBS cluster or Slurm or SGE. And uh, that job is the uh, job you submitted to Bosco. So in the end, it uses um, HT Condor uh, to provide a consistent interface. It uses SSH to connect to the clusters. It uses uh, something from Europe called Blop to interface with the cluster schedule scheduler. And it also does auto detection of the remote cluster's operating system. Um, in order to install the correct version of Bosco. And so you don't have to worry about the, re the remote cluster being Red Hat 5, Red Hat 6, Debian, whatever. Uh, Bosco will detect it and install correctly. Um, and there are some uh, pretty significant benefits to using Bosco. Uh, one of the first ones is uh, a lot of HPC clusters throttle how many jobs you can submit to the cluster. So, uh, for example, uh, at NERSC, you, know, you can only have 10 jobs in queue at any time. Um, so how do you manage, how do you submit, you know, you have 10,000 jobs that you want to get done, how do you submit them to NERSC? And this is what Bosco does. It will, it will only send 10 jobs uh, in the queue at, at NERSC at a time. And uh, these, these limits are automatically detected on the cluster. Uh, job data is transferred back after the job has completed back to where you submitted it. So you don't have to go out to, to the nurse cluster, for example, and uh, SCP all the files back, or you don't have to look through the files there. They can all be transported back to your laptop so that you can open it in Excel or, or however you do post-processing. And again, you don't care about the remote operating system. That's automatically uh, done by Bosco. And I talked a little bit about the job throttling. Um, again, it's automatic uh, on the clusters. It will detect uh, what number of jobs I can, uh, Bosco can submit to it. And it doesn't matter how many jobs you submit to Bosco, Bosco will automatically limit itself. Uh, and, it's, and Bosco is also mobile. Uh, so if you have your submit host as your laptop and you submit 1,000 jobs, and then you close it and you go home for the day. And then you open it back up in the evening, maybe after dinner, and uh, you want to see how your jobs are doing. Bosco will automatically reconnect, check the status of your jobs, and you can uh, um, keep up. And if any jobs are completed, it'll transfer the data back to your laptop. 
Uh, and also, uh, I don't know about you, but I work a lot on airplanes. And so sometimes I get a crazy idea and I want to uh, submit you know, a couple hundred jobs, but obviously I don't have Wi-Fi uh, if I'm on a United flight. And I uh, want to submit uh, just my crazy idea. So I can submit it to Bosco. Bosco will detect that I'm offline. I won't do anything. And then once I open my laptop back, when, once I get home or, or to the conference, uh, Bosco will automatically submit the jobs to the remote clusters uh, just as if I had just submitted them. And so uh, this automatic uh, resuming of operation after the network is reconnected. And again, the job data is transferred uh, to and from uh, your laptop. And so you don't have to SCP to other locations. You don't have to uh, uh, you know, send data using however method you want to use. Uh, it's all central to your laptop. So if you create data with some pre-processing um, or through Excel or however, you can send it directly from your laptop, directly from the directories uh, that you know and love on, uh, on your own home directory. And again, multi-operating -op system uh, support is automatically detected. Uh, there are a few requirements. Uh, I think they're very minimal. Uh, uh, on the clusters, you have to be writing some sort of scheduler. PVS, LSF, HT Condor, SGE, or Slurm. Uh, you have to have a shared home file system, uh, which I think almost all clusters have. But there are no requirements on the submit host. Uh, as I said, uh, if you don't have internet connection, then it'll, uh, it'll try to submit later. But there are really no other requirements on the submit host itself. And Bosco has been uh, tested for compatibility with things such as Pegasus uh, and Dagman. So anything that you normally see run on HT Condor can also run on Bosco. And it's important to bet, uh, point out some of these Joe the biologist benefits. Is you get the simple access to clusters uh, on the campus, and you don't have to worry about the configuration of the cluster. You know whether they have a maximum number of jobs they can have in queue, whether uh, their operating system is different from the submit host that you're uh, submitting on. Uh, it doesn't matter, and so you're able to just run it uh, uh, very transparently. And so a little bit about the future. Uh, we know that scientists don't want to see HD Condor. Uh, that's why every time you see HD Condor, the scientists have written wrappers upon wrappers around HD Condor in order to make their life easier. And they want to see, you know, their MATLAB or their R or their Galaxy. Uh, and so that's exactly what Bosco is doing. We're we're integrating directly with these software projects, and uh, we're starting with R. And I want to show you a demo of that at the end of today, uh, which hopefully, if the install goes well, it will be uh, uh, rather soon. So uh, first thing I want to do is I want to go to the Bosco website, which I just so happen to have open here. It's bosco.opensciencegrid.org. And I'm going to download it. Uh, I'm going to download the beta, uh, which will probably be released later today. And of course, uh, we want to know a little bit about you. And you can follow along uh, if you would like. Uh, the, all of these instructions are also in the quick start inst uh, instructions, which are at the, at the very top. Uh, I, I just want to save it, download it, and save it. And then uh, I will go to the install instructions, although I know these quite well. OK, so the first step, I've, I've already downloaded the uh, installer, so I just need to extract it. And then run the Bosco installer. And it automatically detects I'm running a Mac, 
Uh, this is obviously all on my laptop. So the next step is uh, I need to actually source, and it tells you uh, at the very end, we created the script. It must be run every time you log in. And so we just run this real quick. And now Bosco it, commands are in my environment. So I need to, the first step I want to do is I want to start Bosco. And then I want to add a cluster. Now, uh, in my slides, I am going to use a uh, cluster here at, on the UNL campus called Firefly. And I have to say my username, just like I was logging into it uh, directly. And I have to tell it it's a PBS cluster. And this takes a few seconds to uh, detect the PBS configuration, download the correct um, version of Bosco for Firefly. Now, uh, Firefly is a Red Hat 5 cluster. I'm obviously running on my Mac, and so it needs to download a different version. This may take a few seconds. Okay. Installation complete. Uh, it has been added to Bosco. And now I can submit jobs with these two lines to Firefly. Now, uh, normally the first step you want to do is you just want to do a, a test against it just to make sure everything is running. It does run some minimal tests, but uh, a complete test is always nice. And so uh, this will just take a few seconds, and it'll uh, submit to the to Firefly. Now I do want to point out that uh, uh, so how many command line options have I, has it taken for me to install it? One, two, three, four, five, and I've added the cluster. So five command line options. Now, uh, this will change in the future. We are always trying to make this easier. And so, uh, especially on the Mac platform, this may change rather soon. But uh, more on that later. OK, so this is, this is waiting for the job. Maybe Firefly's busy. Who knows? Uh, so I'm just going to let it sit there, and, and I'm going to move on to R. Now, um, we have a very early working of this R integration, um, but the documents are going to change, and so uh, feel free to install it now, but it may not work. It may not uh, function as advertised. Um, so just prepare yourself. This is all very alpha. Uh, but I did want to show what it looks like and what it's going to look like. And so I have some lines here because I'm fairly new to R myself. And I'm going to start up uh, my favorite IDE for R, which is R Studio. And so uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to load the grid R package, which is right here, which R Studio does a great job of just displaying all the packages available. So all I have to do is just click this checkbox and grid R is loaded. Um, and then I need to initialize it. And I need to say uh, the service I'm using in grid R is bosco.direct. And I have to give it a temporary directory. Uh, local temp your equals. Uh, and that just tells Grid R that I want to use the Bosco direct method. And then I'm going to do a, uh, I need to create a function. And uh, I'm going to use a very simple function. All this, literally all this does is it, uh, if I pass a, if I call this function with any number, it'll just double it. 
It's very simple. Um, obviously, they can be more complex than that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually send this function to be executed out on the grid. And so all I have to do is do apply. And I have to say what variable the, uh, the result will be written to. I say what function to use and the parameter. And so I'm going to use 13. Nice prime number. And it submits. Now what you'll notice is suddenly I have this new value up here, this x. And uh, it's an unknown value right now, so it's been initialized, but uh, nothing's been written to it. Obviously, the job was just submitted now, so it may take a few minutes to actually come back. And uh, what you can do is you can, it, all, all of this is in R. I can ask it, what are the currently running jobs? And it'll tell me, um, I have one job uh, currently running. It's going to write into the variable x, and then this is the unique identifier for the job, um, which hopefully you never have to worry about if everything's working. And so this is going to take a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, I found a great, uh, uh, more complex function from something uh, Marco did yesterday at UC3, where uh, they do a little bit more complex of a function where they actually do a Monte Carlo uh, pi calculation. So this is a little more complex. It might actually take some computational power in order to do this. But I want to show uh, for a more complex function what it looks like. And so in this case, I can just do grid apply, uh, same, very similar syntax, or same syntax. Let's see if I can spell this right. And then I want to do a million iterations of it. And all I do is I do uh, uh, that grid apply, and I'll see that there's a new variable up here uh, in my environment. Print jobs. And I'll see that there's two jobs currently running. And uh, you should also notice that this is all asynchronous. And so I just sent it out. And once the job's complete, they'll be automatically be written the variables will automatically be updated to the new value in uh, in the uh, uh, environment. And so uh, this may take a few minutes. Uh, and of course, you can always cheat and actually see what is the status of my jobs. And so they're both idle on Firefly. Most likely, Firefly is quite busy right now. Uh, and so uh, once these jobs return, it'll put the correct value back into the environment. And uh, you can continue on with your R uh, calculations. Now, uh, you can, I could shut my laptop right now um, with R still running and go off home and then open it back up. And uh, the results, again, would be uh, put up into uh, the environment once the jobs have completed, just just the same way that Bosco uh, is able to handle uh, network. Eric, I mean, this, is, uh, this is really great. Um, I'm wondering, no do you have any news, or do you anticipate having any news so, on the integration uh, with other software, for, such as MATLAB and, uh, R2, and Galaxy? Uh, bring back my jobs. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, both of my jobs are running. Excellent. So they should be coming back anytime now. So there is a student, and, oh, and uh, uh, one of the grid jobs just completed it. You'll see that grid job finished, result written to variable x. And then if I print out the variable x, it got 26, which is exactly, you know, double 13. And then uh, just now, as I typed x, uh, the other job finished, and it's written to new pi. And I can also print out new pi. And, um, well, that's an OK approximation of real pi. Um, so Matt, for, uh, for, for specifically for MATLAB, there is effort inside of the HT Condor 
uh, developers to integrate directly with MATLAB. So they literally have a button that says, go run this on uh, HT Condor. Um, now, MATLAB itself is commercial, so it's not quite like integrating with, um, with R, since R is open source. But I, I think HT Condor Group will, will make significant progress on this and get something working, and then Bosco will take the, uh, the torch and run from there. And so, uh, but that's specifically for MATLAB. Uh, for things like Galaxy, Galaxy is a little bit different. Galaxy runs on a server, and so users don't generally install Galaxy on their own laptop. It's not really useful that way. Um, so we're trying to integrate with, with some of the more common Joe the Biologist applications. The problem with Joe the Biologist is every Joe uses a different application. And so uh, it's difficult, I think to find these common applications that a lot of people use, like R. Um, but yes, we are, we are actively investigating what people are using and how we can integrate with them. And R is just the beginning. So both of Indeed, and, 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 and Derek, I was going to ask, um, do you have in mind a release date for this Bosco R, is that uh, well. by May, you said, or something like that? Or not May, um, there's like a, when is this, co this R conference coming? So as demos go, I can't, I can't imagine this going anymore perfectly. Wish Firefly was a little faster, but. Than yeah, that's a nice. You got you got this down to a nice presentation, Derek. Thank you. Um. Okay. So the. Um, uh, the official release date for Bosco R is not quite set yet. Um, I anticipate some, so we have a representative going to the R users meeting in Spain um, in the middle of July, and it will be working by then. Uh, but the release date may be before that. Um, and But we're looking for like alpha users. We know how this works, we like how this works, but we're wondering, do other people like how this works? Uh, would it be more interesting if you uh, submit an entire R scripts to uh, uh, Bosco, or is it more interesting to submit single functions? Now, of course, these single functions can be very complex. Uh, they could call yet other functions. They could source other files and things of that nature. Um, and uh, the, the Bosco R integration will pick that up and correctly compile the functions. Um, so uh, we're mostly looking back for feedback on, is this the integration that would be ideal uh, for researchers? And to answer David's comments, um, yes. So the, so the answer to that question is, yes, you're able to uh, recover the job state. Um, uh, Bosco will automatically function uh, after you start back up uh, if a laptop crashes and so it will transfer the job data back and then in grid R itself the plugin that we're using for the Bosco R integration uh, there is an ability to uh, well actually the output is written to a normal R data file and so all you have to do is import the data file uh, back now I I think what you're asking for is like uh, a great way to import the session back from where it came from. And I don't know if Grid R provides something that clever. So Derek, uh, um, I know there does is Grid R work with Open Science Grid? Uh, consistency. Um, 
that what it will do is it will check the temporary directory and see if there's any completed jobs um, and possibly import this, this stuff back into the environment. And I think that might do what you want, where it'll automatic as long as the, your temporary directory is the same on on the new R session that you create. Um, I believe it will import the correct variables back. Don't quote me on that. I'll have to look that up. So yes. Yes, it will. The um, uh, so grid R works with. But what if you don't want to fully so uh, build the entire R down to every worker node? I mean, that seems like it's going to be pretty pretty heavy. Why can't you just get R out of it if you have it installed in CBMFS or Oasis or something? What happens is once it gets to the worker node, it will automatically install R. Uh, in the home directory. Now, on most OSG sites, home directories are either really small, non-existent, or something like that. So in that case, it'll fall back to uh, whatever directory uh, the job started in, and it will install R there, and then uh, and then use that R installation to run the uh, R application. Oh well, yes, forty megabytes is small. Then we bring it in without a squid. I mean, that's pretty tiny. Actually, uh, the CHTC has done a very good job of doing exactly this. How it is bringing down all um, every you know, how flexible uh, is grid R? All that um, I mean, how specific is it to R? In other words, can we use some of the back end stuff here for other tasks and other programs? really small for bringing it, bringing it in through Squid. Um, Right. Well, you start talking about these big sites, and, and it becomes uh, uh, okay. big kind of quick. But uh, with Squid, yes, it is very small. And so we're not really worried about that uh, too much, especially on the OSG with their uh, Squid support everywhere. OK. Um, well, GridR is a uh, plugin for R, so I, it's very specific to R. I think is the answer to that question. Can you? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, but this is the kind of integration that I think would be useful for things like MATLAB. Uh, this is quite nice. And, uh, I mean, you know that we. I know this isn't Joe the biologist, but Joe the physicist would like to have something like. And uh, an integration with Root, for example. Um, I don't know what the, you know, that's, what that would be kind about, of about uh, R or Bosco R integration? I apologize, R Studio. how do I get this to be bigger? Oh, that actually works. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, there's obviously not a big, um, impact or, or, you know, I mean, most, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a area that you want to um, probably spend a lot of time in, but it just, you know, for very generic root applications, this seems like it would be kind of an interesting thing to do. Um, it, yeah, it's a little bit like proof in a way, but. Well, I mean, the physicists are a completely different breed, right? I mean, they right. have, uh, uh, every physics experiment has their own right. way of submitting jobs and, and acquiring data. Okay, very good. Any additional questions for Derek? Yes. All right. That was uh, nice, short, and sweet. So our next webinar event is going to be June 21st. And we'll talk about the campus grid activity at Indiana University.
and Rob Quick will talk about some of the work that he's, he's done there. So um, we will convene again in this monthly forum, June 21st.